to play basketball in Greece, they used to throw coins at our heads. Okay? Uh, Jew, 26 countries. Tell me a little bit about what it's like to be a globetrotter. Do you have any interesting stories from your travels? Well, you know, uh, there's so many. I got a chance to meet the Pope once. Uh, I was a rookie then. And I was way over there at Sweet Lou and, and Curly, they was in the, on the forefront. And I looked like a little boy, as you can see, I'm only five, nine and a half. Get my hat. <laughs> you know, half, he always joke, he said, I'm five, six. <laughs> but um, I was way over there and they said, is that your son? Because I didn't have my clothes trial stuff on. One of the guys that was with the Pope said, ask one of the players, was that their son? And it was me. So that was kind of funny when I really came over there. You know, just, you know, all the countries we've been is just like Anthony said, just, it's like, wow, you know, God, you choose me to be able to, you know, spread your word by my actions. You know, and we can talk all day long about who we are in terms of the Lord, but we have to walk. And those 26 countries, I got a chance to just meet a lot of unique and phenomenal people. You know, uh, we went to uh, Bogota, Colombia, and that's one story that was kind of interesting. They kept telling us, you know, don't go out the hotel without security. Don't go here without doing this and that. And me and one of the guys was like, I grew up at Fulton Avenue in Baltimore. Like, I'm going out to get me something to eat, because it was great. So we go out. All I'm going to say to you is that their neighborhoods is a lot tougher than our inner city neighborhoods. <laughs> they had machetes, machine guns. I mean, no, I'm talking about civilians, not the police. And they were looking at us crazy. And, you know, the security jetted to get to us because they thought that we were going to get kidnapped or killed. So. That was one of the stories that was kind of impactful for me. And you see a lot of stuff. Um, one time we played in Greece, and this was real touching for me. You know, it kind of really filled, you know, filled me up in terms of, you know, my emotion. We had a game where in, in a lot of the arenas, they had people living inside of our locker room. So they had a family um, right next door to our locker room before you had to go through the family's room to get to the bathroom. And there was a lady with six kids, and they put her, put her babies in drawers, you know. And after we were getting ready to come out, they give us, you know, complimentary food. And the coach was like, hurry up, she you gotta come out, you know. They get ready to call us out. And when I, you know, I was puzzled because I'd never seen that before, and everybody was acting like that was normal. So I'm packing all our food, giving it to them, you know, and food, and they were like, you can't do that, you know, and that was touching to me. One time, I was playing in uh, another country, a uh, little kid. We always had junior globe trials that sit on our bench, and this particular kid was like, Chew, I love you, I love you, and I just want to be next to you. And I was sitting there, and we would always sign the balls or sign the jerseys. And the kid was just so into me. And I was like, wow, why is this kid so into me like this? And the lady was like, you don't know, you made my son's days. You don't understand the impact you're having on his life. And then when he got, when he kind of went to one of the other players, she said, please, can you stay with him a little longer at halftime? He has a couple days to live. He has cancer. So I was messed up because here you know, I got to go back out there and perform. This kid has cancer. And the coaches was just like, man, just get it. This happens all the time. Just go, you know, and it kind of really shook me up. But those are the kinds of things that happen to get you to see that, you know, here I am bouncing a basketball with 20, 30,000 come to see me. But the real hero was that little boy. And it just makes you appreciate, you know, every time God wakes us up to give us an opportunity to touch people's lives and just be give an impact to people to say, hey, I'm a servant, I'm here for you. So, you know, even with this right here, it's just 
for y'all to be listening to us is like, wow, we here like we on a TV show being crushed. You know, but, you know, I just appreciate everybody here. You know, no job is love to me, you know, because everything that we do is designed to glorify God. Whether you're scrubbing toys, taking the trash out, you know, that's what I love about Anthony. You know, Anthony been through a lot. And he's so humble to understand that he made some choices in his NBA career. And he's not being pretentious and hiding and saying, you know, telling fabricated stories. He's saying that, listen, man, I messed up. And this is what happened because young people need to know that. They don't need to know all the celebrations. They need to know the hardships to get to the celebration. And he's standing here today and walking with Bill to go across the globe to spread the gospel through basketball. And because the, the air runs out, it's all this time now. You know, my time is done. You know, it's my responsibility to give to him. And the things that I didn't know that I'm learning as being a businessman and a philanthropist. So. Okay, so we've been around the world a little bit. Let's bring it back home. Anthony grew up in St. Louis. Uh, I believe in the city of St. Louis. Tell me a little bit about your growing up experiences and maybe uh, who influenced you 